our next speaker on board is Cantus Simon, ladies and gentlemen, as the nation's leading STEM motivational speaker and school success strategist, it is his aim to forestall the academic failure epidemic. STEM education challenges teachers' turnover rate, the trillion dollar student loan debit crisis sweeping across America's schools and colleges. That's why he is passionate about inspiring students, parents, and educators to skyrocket their performance in school and life. Let's go ahead and welcome him aboard. Hello. Yes, welcome to this presentation now i'm not sure where you are across the world but listen wherever you are in the chat room go ahead and let us know what country you are representing yes go ahead and drop that in the chat box drop that in the chat box i'm super duper excited to be here of course i am Kansas simmons and so privileged and honored to be here and uh let me tell you something um I'm a STEM baby. Now, if you guys can hear me in the chat box, we have a lot of interaction. Go ahead and type one in the chat box. Type one in the chat box. But check this out. Yes, I'm a STEM baby. That simply means that uh, I was raised in the area of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. But not only that, my parents, they always encouraged me to pursue education. It was something about education that they felt would prepare me for the future. Now, you see, when my mom, she birthed me out of her belly, uh, my mom actually took me down to the nursery and she dropped me off. And I was there for 25 years. Yes, at only six months old, my mother dropped me off at the kindergarten and uh, I spent time there five years in pre-K, seven years in elementary school, five years in high school, four years in college, then two more years in grad school, and then two more years in grad school. I uh, have an amazing BS degree in chemistry from Norfolk State University, I have a master's of science degree in textile and fiber engineering, and then another master's of science degree in polymer science and engineering. 25 years in school, and that has opened up an amazing opportunity for me to work as a scientist at NASA for many years. Um, while working at NASA, I participate on a really cool project called Fatigue Crack Propagation. Hey, this simply means we were measuring, um, we were measuring fractures in the aircraft and measuring to see how cracks would grow in the shuttles, in our airplanes, and our rockets. Also, later on, working at NASA, worked on something called pressure sensitive paint. Uh, this is where now we paint the surface of an aircraft. And the objective was to get rid of all of the rivets, all of the screws, and make the surface one smooth surface. And then we paint that surface. And in the paint, we're now able to measure all of uh, the outside forces. Uh, later on, I transitioned to develop contact lenses. Now, is there anybody out there right now who's wearing contact lenses? Anybody wearing contact lenses? If you're wearing contact lenses, type two in the chat box. Type two in the chat box. Well, uh, while working at supervision, I specifically worked on daily wear lenses. This is where, of course, you will put a contact lens in at the beginning of the day, and uh, you would take it out at the end of the day. But during the, during the day, it was our objective to make the lens more comfortable, right? And so as you blink your eye throughout the day, guess what? You're now in the lens it's releasing moisture into the eye. Not only that, I also had the opportunity to work on something called VisiTint. Uh, many people who drop their contact lenses, you know who you are, right? You drop your contact lens and it hits the ground and then you're now trying to find your contact lens. Well, we created something called VisiTint in the contact lens. Now, no longer am I a scientist uh, at NASA or SEBA Vision, but now, I travel the country speaking on STEM. Yes, I'm a STEM baby, a STEM kid, and now a STEM speaker speaking all across the world on STEM. Yes, and today I want to impress upon you the importance of the part that you play in everything that we have going on in our world. 
Uh, if you're on YouTube, of course, have many different videos there on YouTube. I have courses and programs to help students, educators, and professionals. And uh, today, I am so excited to be here with you. Now, what I want to say to you is this. I'm here for three reasons, and uh, I would love to be there in person with you, right? I know you represent many different countries, but here's the thing that I, I'm going to share with you today, that there are three things that I believe that we all have to understand. And if I was there with you, wherever you may be in the world, I will, I will probably and most likely give you a copy of my book. But because I can't give you one, here's what I can do. I can give you a free gift. So wherever you may be today, uh, the things I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be sharing in my STEM is everywhere activity book. And just because you're here as a free gift, I just want to say thank you. Uh, if you simply go to stemiseverywhere.com, I'll be able to serve you today. Also, if you want a copy of a book for students, hey, just go to playyouragamebook.com where we now can impact more students across the world so that they can play their A game in school. Now, you matter, right? Now, what do you say, Cantus? you matter? You see, some years ago, uh, my mother, she, she birthed me out of her belly, right? And as I was born, one of the things that uh, my mother noticed when I came out of the womb, my mother noticed that her son was missing some of his fingers. Boom. And you may say to yourself, okay, huh? How does that impact STEM? You see, growing up, I felt like my fingers was going to stop me from becoming a success. But you see what? I had to turn my mess into my success. And here's one amazing thing that I learned from my mother. And I want to start this session off by saying this. She said to me, son, quit looking at what you don't have and focus on all the things you do have. Yeah, she said, son, quit looking at what you don't have and focus on all the things you do have. Now, of course, this last year and a half, all around the world, we have, we've had a few challenges. But guess what? Out of these challenges, there are a lot of things that uh, we've improved on. Yes, I believe that we've improved on our, our digital learning across the world, right? At one time where there were not computers or resources for schools, now there are computers and resources, right? Uh, teachers that would normally stand in front of a classroom and teach, now they know how to give instruction online and digitally. And I believe that where we are today, yes, where we are today is preparing us for our future. I even say this, what we went through the last few years is preparing us for our now and our future. Now, here's what I want you guys to realize. Here's the reason I'm here today, is to remind you that you matter. Yes, you matter and you impact the success of our world. Now, if we go back a few years, right? If we go back a few years, 2009, Listen, I'm from America. You are where, where you are. Uh, Doha, Carter, you guys are where you are. And here's the reality. There are a lot of things that we've learned where science and math is concerned, right? At one time, we were really low in science and math. But because of progression, things have gotten better and better. At one time, we didn't have a lot of teachers teaching STEM subjects. But every single year, we're getting better and better. And I want to show you guys that you matter, right? Here are five reasons I believe why STEM education is important in 2021. Number one, STEM jobs are the future of our economy, right? You can look to see what's going on right now in your country. Guess what? Because of technology, because of advancement, because of opportunities created through STEM, the economy is growing. Number two, STEM teaches critical thinking and innovation. Yes, what we learn, STEM teaches critical thinking and innovation. 
Number three, STEM classes provide unique opportunities for teamwork. Now, I'm pretty sure that uh, the people that you work with, right, the, the people that you are uh, motivating or encouraging, the people in your office, it encourages teamwork. Number four, STEM curriculum helps students develop management skills, right? STEM curriculum helps students develop management skills. Based on what they are doing in the school, it's now preparing them for future management skills. And number five, recent events have only made technology skills more important. And I just mentioned that earlier, that what we went through these last few years, guess what? It has now made technology and made our skills more important. You matter. Now, here's a diagram, and uh, we have many individuals here. And in this diagram, this is what I call the ecosystem of STEM. On one hand, if you look at this, you see that uh, we have pre-K students, right? Those students in kindergarten through 12th grade in the education system, what they do every single day in the classroom, the instruction that they get, it impacts our students. And then we think about the out of school programs. Can we create high quality learning opportunities so that when students are outside of the classroom, they are still being impacted. And then higher education. Can we offer and continue to offer higher education programs and resources and training materials within our community that now impacts our students? And then, you know, I, I know here today, we have a lot of partners, partners here. We have a lot of corporations here. The business opportunities, that which you do on an everyday basis, to lead the philanthrop um, uh, philanthropy, the support, the access that you use in the workplace is now helping our students. And then now, like we have over in Qatar, they're STEM rich institutions. And then we also have families. Everybody plays a part in making sure our students have an amazing future. So I want to find out uh, in the audience there, uh, moderator, if you can help me out, let me know there. How STEMI are you? Let me know. Number one, are you a student? If you're a student, type one in the chat box. If you're a student, type one in the chat box. If you are an educator, type two in the chat box. Yes, I see students here. I see educators here. Awesome. If you are an entrepreneur, someone who says, you know what, I'm going to take what I'm doing in business to make my country and world a better place, type three. Maybe you have a nonprofit organization. Maybe you have a ministry uh, organization that's giving back to the community to improve STEM. Let me know. Uh, number five, if you're in the corporate space, right? If you're in the corporate space, how STEMI are you? Maybe you work in the government, right? You have grants and you work with uh, in the government to move, yes, to move technology forward type six in the chat box. Or maybe you are a parent. And um, can we now have love on our students and our, and our kids? If you are, you're a STEMI. Maybe you're a coach. Maybe you're somebody who can now support and continue to mentor. Type eight in the chat box of that you. And you're a mentor. If you are owner of a business, if you are a partner, and maybe you're someone that prays for other people. I want you to realize that as a parent, student, educator, government official, owner, intercessor, entrepreneur, you absolutely matter. Now, I understand that based on a lot of things that have been going on, right? I've spoken to teachers. 
I've spoken to different individuals and uh, I know sometimes things can get rough, right? Uh, being able to adjust with all of the moving parts. Sometimes you can get burned out. Sometimes you can get stressed out. Sometimes you can get steamed out, right? And normally I would ask you on a scale from one to 10, how burned out are you? But I'm not going to ask that today because I believe if you can answer these three questions, it's going to help you stay strong, right? You must be strong. Strong individuals, strong teachers create strong schools. Strong schools create strong communities. Strong communities create strong cities. Strong cities create strong states. Strong, strong, uh, strong states, that was a hard one right there. Strong states create strong countries and strong countries create strong worlds. But it all starts back to the individual. And as an individual, here's a question I want you to ask yourself. Here are some questions to help you say STEM fit. Number one, to, in the area of showing that you matter is this, what's your why? Yeah, what's the big reason you get up every single morning to push digital education, to push science, to push technology? What's your why? You know, for example, I could be walking down a river, and let's say as I'm walking down a river, my cell phone falls into the river. Now, I may be tempted to jump into the river to get my cell phone, but it's just a cell phone. But if my mother was walking with me and we were walking down the river and I fell in the river, and went, excuse me, and my mother fell in the river, now I will have a bigger reason to jump in the river. That's my why. And my big question to you is this, what's your why? What's the thing that's moving you to jump into this STEM river, to this digital education space? What is moving you? What is motivating you? So that's question number one I want you to ask yourself. Question number two is this. What are you pushing? Yes, what are you, when I say pushing, what are you emphasizing? What are you encouraging? And of course, uh, this great organization is putting on this uh, live summit because we are all trying to push digital learning, STEM education to the next level. And thirdly, outside of what are you pushing, who will you impact? Yes, who will you impact? Is it a student? Is it a parent? Is it uh, a nation? Is it improving your country to now have world-class education in 2025, 2030, 2038? Who will you impact? I believe these three questions. What's your why? What are you pushing? And who will you impact will help you stay strong as we all move forward, because at the end of the day, I want to remind you that you absolutely matter. You absolutely matter. Reason number two that I'm here, I'm here to remind you that you are absolutely amazing. Yes, you are amazing. Now, I believe that uh, one of the things that I'm irrationally passionate about is making sure that students understand how powerful technology is, how cool STEM is, you know, how, how amazing science and math and engineering is. And I believe this, we should be able to teach STEM subjects so that our students learn it. And when they can learn it, then they will love it. And because they love it, they will now live it, right? They will learn it, they will love it, and they will live it. In the chat box, I want you to go ahead and type this. Say STEM is everywhere. 
Yes, put it in the chat box. STEM is everywhere. Now let's think for a second, right? When I put my clothes on today, I used an iron and I knocked the wrinkles out of my sweater. When I went in to comb my beard, that was part of STEM. At one time it was nappy, but because of my comb and a little bit of heat, it now straightened my hair out. Here's the reality. STEM is everywhere. And I believe that if we're going to have our students, wherever they may be, if we're going to improve our education system, guess what? We have to encourage them that everywhere we look, science, technology, engineering, and math plays a part. Now, here's what I want you guys to do. I need your help here, uh, commentators, those in the chat box. I need you to let me know, all right? I'm going to put up certain subjects, and I'm going to give us the opportunity to chime in how we can teach STEM based on these certain topics, okay? Number one, STEM is everywhere. In the fashion industry, right? Think all across the world, in Qatar, in India, in India, right? In the United States, fashion, it's a big deal. But guess what? How can we now take what's popular fashion and teach science, technology, engineering, and math? Maybe now we can, we can have a fashion where now we could turn a sweater just by pressing a button into a, a shirt, a short sleeve shirt. Or maybe we can have on jeans and we can press a button and those jeans will turn to another garment. Fashion, yes. What about all over the, the world? We all have, uh, what, politics. We all have different things in our government. How can we use STEM to improve government? How we select leaders, how we move policies. STEM is everywhere. What about in sports, right? Now, I'm a big baseball fan. And of course, we see the technology now with baseball. We see it where soccer or football is concerned. I know many different countries call it football, right? Um, but in sports, there are opportunities now where we can improve what we do. What about security? Like, can you think about this? There are over 3,000 people here today, over what, 30, 30 something countries represented. And guess what? Because of security, we don't have any violations. STEM is everywhere. And of course, in our education system. What we experienced the last year and the growth of online education, the growth of distance learning, the growth, the growth of uh, digital learning is on an all-time high because of technology. And what I want you guys to see is this. STEM is everywhere and you are absolutely amazing. You know, regardless of where you may be in the world, you play an amazing part and you are absolutely amazing. Because of individuals like you, we can push science and we can push math and push technology. And it takes people like you to make this world a better place. All right, so that's reason number three to show you that you are amazing. Reason number three, I want to encourage each of you to take your assignment seriously. Yeah, take your assignment seriously. Now, of course, you see, I'm the coolest guy with uh, 7.25 fingers. And I bring this up because, as I mentioned earlier, so many times we focus on what we don't have. But I want everyone to focus on what you do have. Regardless of what field you're in, regardless of uh, the resources that you have, I want you to realize that you are enough and you have an assignment. Now look at this word assignment, A-S-S-I-G-N-M-E-N-T, right? There is an assignment that's meant for you. Now I know there's an invisible A-M-E-A-N-T, but there's something meant 
for you to do, right? If you think about it, this microphone has an assignment. The lights have a, an assignment. This camera has an assignment. And I want to say this to you. You have an assignment. But not only that, if you look in the middle of that word assignment, you'll see this phrase S-I-G-N, sign, right? There are certain signs in your life to move you or to push you or to direct you to your assignment, your gifts, your talents, the things that make you happy, the things that make you sad, all of those are geared towards your assignment. And then I-G-N. It simply stands for ignorant, I-G-N, ignorant, simply meaning not knowing. There are a lot of people who don't understand their assignment, but also there are a lot of people ignorant of the amazing opportunities that we have because of digital opportunities because of technology. You know, I know here in America, you know, there are some things that we're doing to improve science and education. And I know there in Qatar, right? Carter, like I was there uh, two years ago and I look at Education City and guess what? Because of people like you, people now are teaching and training and growing and making our education system better. Why? because we are getting rid of the ignorance gap and to help individuals locate their assignment. A-S-S-I-G-N-M-E-N-T. -S -S -E I want you to realize that you have an assignment. You have an assignment. And as I close, I wanna say this to you. As we embark on these next two days in this amazing summit, here's the beautiful thing about uh, what we have going on. We have partnership, right? We have sponsors, we have schools, we have educations, we have teachers, we have professionals, we have parents, and we are partners. So what this means over these next two days, as you go into this conference, into this summit, I want you to network. You know, think about some things that you can do to improve your schools, your colleges, your mentorship programs. What are some partnerships that you can do with other companies? What are some collaborations that you can do? Because the reality is this, STEM is everywhere, but more importantly, we are everywhere. And because we are everywhere, we now can impact more and more individuals. All right. I want to take a few questions here that are popping up in my chat box. Uh, somebody asked a question here. It says, what do you see as the most pressing challenge in undergraduate science and mathematics education today and how STEM education can help them? Yes. Uh, one of the most pressing challenges I see in undergraduate education is this. A lot of people don't see how their college degree plays a part to future technology, right? Some kind of way in our colleges, a lot of students just see their degree as getting a piece of paper. And what we have to do now is to be able to communicate with them, to show them that, hey, what you're doing in college is preparing you to think. Your thinking now creates a skill set. And now you have these skills, which now we can use to improve our country and our world, right? So what can we do in our schools? We can take students out of the classroom and put them in corporations, allow them to see what's going on, allow them to understand how what they learn in the science classroom is directly related to what we see in our world. All right. Any other questions here?
All right. Somebody asked me earlier here, uh, do we have uh, any electronic versions of my book? And um, I want to simply say thank you so much for having me. We can go more into detail. Simply go over to STEM is everywhere. Uh, thank you to Qatar for making this happen. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Have a great day. It was a pleasure having you on our platform. Thank you for coming and sharing insights. I'm sure everybody is delighted to have you on board and to listen to your session. Thank you so much once again.